is Kazu Kauinana. I'm uh, from here. I'm Hawaiian, Japanese. My mom's Hawaiian. My father's Japanese. I'm uh, 63 years old now. Uh, I went to Kamehameha up till the ninth grade. After the ninth grade, I spent time at uh, San Diego High School for one year, which was a big eye opener. Came back and finished high school at Kalani High. Uh, I then attended the University of Hawaii, Santa Barbara City College, and then later Colorado University Boulder to get my master's degree. At Kamehameha, I was known as Solomon Fukuda. Uh, then, but all my, my family, my friends called me Kazu. And so after I left Kamehameha, I went by the name Kazu. Whenever I introduced myself, it was Kazu. And later on, when I got married to my, my current wife, uh, I changed my name from Fukuda to Kauinana. Kauinana is my mother's maiden name. And I chose my name for several reasons. Uh, Kazu Fukuda didn't fit my face. I look more Hawaiian than Japanese. I wanted a name that represented my ethnicity, Japanese Hawaiian. That piece was done uh, at the Bishop Museum. I took a class from Rocky Jensen and it was on Hawaiian sculpture. Uh, most of the, the students in the class did reproductions of the tikis in the museum. Uh, I didn't want to do that, and so instead I, I saw this tiki of a, uh, a Hawaiian, uh, I think a fertility god, and, and she looked, I think it had been stolen eventually. She had wild hair and uh, she had very large genitalia, breast, uh, and uh, was really interesting and kind of frightening looking, but uh, that inspired me. So I made this piece. Uh, that I call Kahuina, and it means the returning. And it has to, be, has to do with the Renaissance, the Hawaiian Renaissance in the 70s, how the uh, suppression of the Hawaiian culture through the banning of the language, hula, uh, some of the music, uh, had, had pretty much dampened the Hawaiian culture, but in the 70s it was revived. This piece was in the shoebox show at the University of Hawaii. It ended up tra traveling internationally. I think it's necessary that you do both uh, because one feeds off of the other. If you're a good fine artist, you'll do better commercial art. If you do good commercial art, you'll be able to support your fine art. I was so connected to the ocean, surfing and uh, swimming, everything like a local kid does, uh, that was me. In fact, when I first left home, a lot had to do with surfing. I was wondering, am I just going to stay in New York my whole life? And it, I thought that might be possible. I had missed things that I had disregarded or just neglected. And I am so happy to be back here now. Our face has a lot to do with our identity, whether we, we, we think so or not. Uh, people always react to you depending on your face, and this is the way it is throughout the world. Uh, they ask you what you are, and they try to identify you. Here in Hawaii, people see me as being Hawaiian, which I am. Uh, when people say, oh, you Japanese. Yes, I'm Japanese, but they only see a Hawaiian face. But most definitely, uh, having traveled, having seen different societies, having seen people who are in similar situations as Hawaiians, uh, I definitely do have political feelings and my work some of my work is very political. Fine art, no censorship, just say what you believe. However, including in that border of fine art is an art that reaches a wide audience. 
because that wide audience has a uh, varied understanding of art, of political issues, of uh, understanding of differences of culture, a good work of art that reaches a wide audience will have some censorship because an, a blatant um, lack of censorship can make that artwork ignored. To me, it means responsibility, being Kanak Maoli. Also, looking Hawaiian. Um, if I didn't look Hawaiian, would I be less responsible? I don't know. It's people's reactions to us that uh, I think uh, blatantly lays a, relation, uh, a responsibility on you. I'm very proud to be a baby boomer. My age group has experienced phenomenal advances in technology. I got to see people landing on the moon and now the change in communication with the internet. The thinking of baby boomers changed. It was rev a revolution, racial revolution. The feminists came about. It was all kinds of liberation that happened in my time. I think I'm very fortunate to have lived in the time that I lived. These pieces here are, uh, are a statement on technology. Cell phone devices have become, have come to a level of uh, religious um, <laughs> obedience. It's almost become a religion in itself. This is the model I used to make the 100 foot long sculpture from the end of the tail to the claw in the front of a mo'o. Uh, it was a piece to illustrate the, the name of mo'ili'ili. Uh, it was originally called ka mo'o'ili'ili, which means the dragon in pieces. Uh, the legend in that, piece, in that community is that Hi'iaka, Pele's sister, destroys a large mo'o or dragon uh, on, that, on that ridge and uh, all the pieces from the dragon make up that hill that stretches from the Japanese graveyard and back of the school all the way up Wa'ahila Ridge. These are, uh, these are parts of a commission that's out at Campbell High School and it had to do with Ka'ahu Pahau, the shark amokua of uh, Eva Beach and Pearl Harbor. Uh, there's a bronze statue right in front of Campbell High School. This project, or this piece, is for the Malama Learning Center. I had there, the fish are eight feet long, they're about a ton each, and the ramp here was uh, made with dirt. It's on the corner of the uh, Kapolei High School property. Hawaiians just didn't give their kingdom away. It was taken away illegally, and that is a cause for a lot of bitterness by Hawaiians. The returning is what's important to me, that through education, through awareness, Hawaiians are now becoming, and the revival of their culture, becoming back and coming back into their own. So I'm very proud of that. Yes, whether they make art or not, that they have an aesthetic awareness that goes beyond making, quote, fine art or even commercial art. It's an awareness about their community, about themselves, about how they should take an interest in, in, in what their world looks like. The world around us visually affects our thinking. They should be able to start to recognize or judge what is good what is not so good.